Hi, I'm Hannah. I'm a tutor at Sky Academy, and we are in the topic of algebra within the Year 11 Standard Course, and we're looking at formula and equations, which comes under the syllabus topic of MSA1. So in this video, we're going to have a look at changing the subject of the formula. So firstly, we've got to figure out what the subject of an equation is. So if I write down the simple equation of x equals y plus 3, when a letter or a pronumeral has no numbers associated to it, meaning it's by itself um, or it's alone, this is the subject of the formula. So in our equation that I just made up, the letter or pronumeral that is by itself is x. So x is by itself out the front of the equal sign, whereas y has the letter, um, y, the letter has the number three associated to it. So if you ever see a letter by itself, that's the subject of the formula. And so changing the subject of the formula means we want to get a different letter by itself out the front of the equal sign. So if we were to change the subject of this equation here, we would want to get y by itself out the front of the equal sign and have x associated with the number three. So essentially, you're just rearranging the formula that you've been given. Um, and you do this by doing simple algebraic steps. So hopefully by now you know that when you go, um, when you take numbers or letters from one side of the equation to the other side of the equal sign, so if we pretend this equal sign splits our equation in half, when we're going from this side to um, the other side or vice versa, when you're going from different sides, you do the opposite. So if we wanted to get y by itself, we would need to get rid of this three because having the three associated to the y makes x the subject of the formula, but we wanna get y the subject of the formula. So we need to get rid of the three and make the three associated to the x. So we're gonna do the opposite. So if it's a positive three here, we're going to minus three, because if you have a positive three and then you minus three, you get zero. So essentially we're gonna have y plus zero, which means we can just write it as y. But if we minus three from the right hand side, we have to minus three from the other side. And so if I write x minus three here, that's our first algebraic step. And I can rewrite now my equation. So it'll be x minus three equals y plus zero, but we don't have to write plus zero. So now my new equation is y by itself out the front of an equal sign with x minus three. So I've just rearranged the subject of the formula from x to b y. So let's have a look at the blue box here. It says move the pronumerals and number, numbers other than the pronumeral you want as a subject to the right hand side of the equation. So that's what we were doing. We moved our three over to the other side um, and then we were able to put y out the front and change x minus three to be um, on the right hand side of our equal sign. So when we're moving any term or pronumeral or number to the other side, like we did with our positive three, there's a couple of things you gotta remember. You perform the opposite operation, which we already know. So if we have a plus, we do a minus. If we have a times, we do a divide. If we have a uh, power of, we do a square root. We know we have to add or subtract or divide or times or square root or power the um, term to both sides of the equation so that we equal zero. 
and then you do it to the other side as well. So what steps two and three is saying that if we have x equals y plus three, you minus three from this side, that's step two, and then minus three from this side, which is step two also. And then if we were to do a multiply or divide, that's what step three is showing. So essentially you just have to look at steps one and then either two or three. So you look at the equation, want to get something by itself, so do the opposite, um, add or subtract, and then either multiply or divide. So let's have a go at doing some examples. So it says make R the subject of the compound interest formula. So this question assumes you know the compound interest formula. If you don't, it is on your reference sheet when you do the HSC, but it is a good one to remember. So it's where A or your um, future value equals the present value, one plus R to the power of N. So there's two different ways of writing it. Um, it depends what you prefer, but it's the same um, formula. So what we want to do is we want to make R the subject of our formula, which if you remember, means we want to get R by itself out the front of the equal sign and have the rest of the equation on the right hand side. So to do that, we're going to do the opposite of um, the symbols on the right hand side. So if we imagine that there is a times in here, keeping the P stuck to the brackets, then we have to do the opposite. So we wanna get the P and take it to the other side to leave R by itself on this side. So if it's times here, we're going to divide by P and then we're going to divide by P on the other side. So our first step is going to be A divided by P equals one plus R to the power of N. Now, the next step would be to get rid of this N. So we're slowly doing algebraic um, steps to get R by itself. Sometimes you'll be able to do it in one whole go. Other times you'll have to take it slowly and slowly get R by itself. So we want to get rid of the um, power of N. So the opposite of the power of N is the square root of N. So we're going to square root of N our other side. So that means step two is going to look like the square root of N of A over P equals one plus R. You can include the brackets, but because that's the only thing that's left, you don't need the brackets. So now, all we've got to do to get R by itself is to get rid of this one. Once we get rid of the one, R will be by itself and will be the subject of the formula. So if we have a positive one here, we have to minus one. And if we minus one from this side, we have to minus one from the other side. So step three is going to look like the uh, square root of N A over P minus one equals R. And we can rewrite that to get R on the left hand side and the rest of our equation on the right hand side and just by flipping it around. So that would be our fourth and final step. And that means that R is now the subject of the formula. What we did was we slowly did three steps of getting R by itself. So our first one was where we uh, divided. Then we did the um, square root of N, then we minus one, and then we flipped it around so that R was on the left hand side and um, our rest of the equation was on the right hand side. So let's have a go at um, a number question. So the cost of an event is given by C equals 40N plus 75. 
where C is the total cost and N is the number of people attending. Make N the subject of the formula. So I'm going to rewrite the equation. And we now know we need to make N the subject of the formula. So we want to get N by itself out the front of the equal sign and then the rest of the equation towards the right. So what we're going to do first is we're going to um, slowly get rid of things from this side to make N by itself. So if we have positive 75 here, we can minus 75 to make that zero. And if we minus 75 from this side, we need a minus 75 from that side. So then our first step is going to look like C minus 75 equals 40. N. Now, if we imagine there's a times between the 40 and the N holding them together, we need to do the opposite of times, which we know to be divide. So if we divide this side to make it um, just N, then we have to divide by this side. And we're going to divide by 40. So then the Second step is dividing by 40. So then we get C on 75 divided by 40 equals N. And then we can rearrange this by flipping them over so that N is on the left and the rest of the equation is on the right. And that would be how we change the subject of the formula for this example. So essentially you want to, when you're doing subject of the formula questions, you want to get a different letter by itself out the front to be the subject. And then you want to have the rest of the equation on the right hand side. And you do this by slowly taking away um, from one side. So if we're trying to find N, whatever numbers are on the side of N, we want to get rid of them to make N by itself. So we slowly took away 75, and then we took away the 40, and you do that by doing the opposite. So if it's a plus, we do a minus. If it's a times, we do a divide. And that's how you do the subject of the formula.